considering the personal need he had for justice, the um, need an entire nation had for justice, that was an incredibly brave thing to stand true to. And meeting him in person, you know, he's he, he's he's he was talked about, I think, in the Washington Post as the the colonel with a conscience, and he certainly does have that. So he was incredibly forthcoming when I met him and his wife, and uh, he was amazingly helpful. I was trying to understand who he was before we meet him in the film, so I could inhabit him and then have him react in, in this drama to everything that unfolds for him. And uh, he even gave me his, um, the gold marine wings that his father, who was a dentist, had actually smelted out of gold for him, um, handmade, and uh, said, you, you must wear these on the day that you to know that I had that blessing was incredibly important and to be entrusted with that artifact alone was incredibly important. So, um, yeah, I was, I was really honored to, um, to bring his story to the screen. Taha is a very subtle actor, but he, always has an imprint of charisma and personality in his characterizations he's just he's very cool and just very easy to spend time with and there's a searing intelligence behind all of that but it's never demonstrated it's there's a lot of humor i mean it really did marry well with what comes off the page and and how mohammedu had sounded when we talked to mohammedu and uh himself so it, it seemed like the obvious choice from the very beginning to be honest he has an economy of style in his performance um, which I, I think is very, very useful for this because, you know, you want to be very close to this character because of the confinement, because of the duress of what he endures. It, it just, it goes on. And you also want to really, really feel for him. You want to like him. You want to be with him and root for him. At the end of the day, this is a celebration of the human spirit, this film. That's really what it's about. Um, it's not specifically about a political stance or um, knocking an administration or a political point of view. It's about a human point of view of um, what we can endure and what we shouldn't have to endure and how to take solace from that and to realize the human spirit is a pretty extraordinarily robust entity and he and Mohammed is literally living proof of that oh, I mean what can you say about Jodie she's just so unbelievably lovely she's whip smart funny easy to work with um, helpful and collaborative and um, and yeah of course you know the fanboy me is going oh, I'm going to see me Jodie Foster. I, I can't not have those moments. You know, I've grown up watching her films and uh, directed films as well as acted. And, uh, you know, um, yeah, I'm a huge, huge fan of her as an actress and a director. And I just, to have the opportunity to work with someone like that is always a learning experience and a joyful one at that when they're that pleasant. Kem's got this uncanny knack of making the everyday and the known and the historical, the actual factual, very entertaining and feeling like it's fresh, feeling like it's happening for the first time in front of you, even if it's um, a historical event that's well documented. And, you know, he's always searching out for the truth in the, in the drama, in the scene. Um, and I think that makes him a really good director. And he has quite a universal approach with that. He allows actors their space for process, however they get into a role or a scene and, you know, he'll do a lot of rehearsal with someone or with two people or with the whole scene or he'll just leave it alone or he'll talk about something technically from his point of view that needs, you know, a, a little bit of help from the actors to limit the choices but narrow it down to the frame that needs to work or the camera movement. But it, it's never not creative. I mean, I think there was a moral imperative with this story that was a big draw. I think as an actor, I, you know, it, it was very nice to play someone who's not a troubled genius, who is human and has flaws that are recognizable and is struggling with um, his own moral compass and, and sense of purpose and, and place within the story. And a, a really nice character arc to play, even though a supporting role. And 
you know, it, it's nice for me to be able to play a, a supporting role, especially in something that I care so much about. I think primarily this is a story about joy and hope and salvation, and it takes in uh, a very specific moment in our history uh, where very difficult questions were being asked of us is what is the correct response? How should we deliver justice for a massive um, atrocious act of terrorism? And what is it that defines us as opposed to that action? Ends that justify the meaning. It, you know, it's a political thriller. It's also a legal thriller. You've got incredible character studies of strong-minded people on both sides of those arguments. And at the center, the front and center, is this luminous human being, this extraordinary man who I hope the audience will be um, charmed, amused, and heartbroken by. Not in my wildest dream had I dreamed about writing a book, let alone having that book being adapted into a motion picture. And this is all because of the hard work of uh, Nancy Hollander, my friend and my sister, Nancy Hollander, and the people who worked with her. And there are many people who have been of great help to us, ACLU, and I just can't tell you. I, I don't want to start with names because that would make me leave some people I don't want to leave out. And uh, I always laughed when I read the script that uh, has been uh, uh, going through the, just the regular process of uh, script writing. And I looked at Kevin and say, no matter how dramatic this is, <laughs> The reality was more dramatic than this, <laughs> you know, because this is beyond anything you could imagine. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I know that some act. We both so walked gifted. into that set, and both of us, even even me, I'm, I'm sure Mohammed was more just it made me gasp that it was so much like when I would walk through that to visit him. Yeah, I think this is a perfect cast. I couldn't have hoped for a better cast. Even the personality, the soul, the beauty of those people in their soul is just beyond me. I, I Throughout the making of this film, once it really got started, I've worked with everyone. I worked with Leah, I worked with Kevin, I met with Kevin, um, I met with Jody, and I also, I really spent hours and hours on the phone with them talking about little details that they wanted to know about. I think the casting it's beyond my wildest dreams yes. of what Same. the cast that we would have in this movie. And every one of the three that I've seen are just perfect, just perfect. I mean, you know, people have said to me, well, Jodie Foster's younger than you. And I said, yes, but I was a good 15 years younger back then. So she's not very much younger than I was then, and Shailene is not much younger than Terry was, and you know, Tahar isn't either. I mean, they, that was the time. It's not who we are now, it's who we were then. And they really captured it, really captured it. You just imagine that we were very beautiful then. <laughs> um, I've noticed that the way she uses her hands, um, the way she relates to Shailene, the way she relates to Mahamadou, it's so much 
like, and, and I even mentioned it while we were watching it, while the three of them are in the room together, and there are a lot of different things going on that first day that we saw. There's calm times, there's screaming times, there's funny times, and she really just makes me feel like she kind of got inside me, although Jody warned me that this is not an impersonation. Um, she brings what she brings to it, and, uh, and I recognize that, but she's really captured, I believe, I think they've all captured that moment in time that happened and that the book was about. Well, you know, the beautiful thing about making movies is that um, it's always about emotion. You know, that always comes first. And even though the facts are interesting, the facts are fascinating, and they're part of our history, you know, none of it really comes together unless it's sewn together with characters and their emotional lives together. She's this crazy ball of contradictions. Um, she's somebody who um, is very measured and can be very tough and very to the point and, and kind of brutal in her analysis, and yet she's incredibly warm. And you really feel um, that through all of these years of spending all of this time with Mohamedou, um, obviously, you know, pleading his case and defending him and spending years and years and years really just sitting in a cell with him while, you know, on the elliptical or watching television, um, that she really came to love him. And um, when you see them together, as I've been able to do this week while we've been shooting, it's such a special thing to see Mohamedou and Nancy together, this, you know, older woman who feels, you know, very maternal towards this guy. And you can just see the twinkle in both of their eyes. I think they really mm -hmm. care about one another. Mohamedou and Mohamedou's story has a lot to teach us um, about humility. Uh, about humanity, I think, uh, but also about forgiveness um, and about the human spirit. You know, he's, he's somebody who has lived a life that none of us could imagine, survived uh, a cruelty that we could never imagine, um, ripped out of his home, uh, abducted from his home, and, and taken to a prison, and many prisons, uh, tortured, um, f feeling like he probably would never leave there. And yet, um, he, he loves this world, he loves this life, has had to have a real understanding of his, um, the people that, that imprisoned him, you know? And um, I think he, there, you know, he says, uh, he, he's, he, he, he has become a writer. Uh, in some ways, his path was open to him, what this experience, this terrible, terrifying experience, in some ways revealed to him who he really was. And he really is a writer, something that maybe he didn't know before. I think he thought he was, you know, a technical guy who did computers. I mean, um, and here he is, a guy who ended up being a writer. And, you know, not just about um, his, his journey, but also poetry, and also a kind of psychological, um, path. I think that he's a, an amazing teacher about, um, about the human spirit. I just love how his mind works. I think he's really curious and inquisitive and um, I'm, I've been really amazed by this shoot to see how the documentary spirit really works, that um, it really does work by instinct, that yes. he um, really believes that you know, the way that you approach making films is that you don't try to control it or shape it, that you spend your time noticing. You, you're in the space, you see the characters, and then you notice what's happening, and then you make sure that you capture that. Um, and uh, I think that really works for this film. I think that it gives this film a, a really interesting tone. I think we really want to get it right. Uh, we want to be fair to all of the parties because um, and I really believe in this. I think that the, the truest stories are the ones where there, there just aren't any bad guys, you know, where it's just human beings that come together and they're trying to do the best that they can, um, but they're guided by fear. 
Um, and I, I think that if there is a lesson in this story, um, is that, you know, that impulse, that fear impulse is so strong. And unfortunately, it, in the era of Guantanamo, on the era of, of 9-11, it took over the American psyche. Uh, we were making decisions, we were making international foreign policy decisions by fear, instead of using the laws and the rules that we knew, um, that we held dear to. The law is something that I'm really interested in. Um, how it works and the intricacies of it and, you know, how our country is shaped by that, how the world is shaped by that. Um, and uh, if there was ever, if there was anything that made me believe in democracy and the rule of law, it's been making this film. Um, I think this film really uh, drives that home, that it, it's, it's the most important thing that we have. And um, it's our humanity, really. Well, I first became aware of this story when Mohamedou's book, Guantanamo Diaries, was published, I think, in 2016. And it was a bit of a cause celeb because this was the first memoir, the first piece of literature that actually had been written in Guantanamo prison by somebody who was serving there. And, of course, the whole uh, uh, way that it was brought out was in redacted form. It was published, and it was a sort of great coup by the publishing company, actually, to, bring out the book with all the redactions, so all the black lines through it. And so, sometimes there were page upon page that was just blacked out, blacked out, blacked out. And of course, as a kind of physical object, it had this amazing power, and it spoke to the kind of the control and the censorship of the American state. And so even though Mohammedou's voice was being heard, it was still being censored, still being controlled. The man is so charming and so funny and so not what you expect from a, you know, a, you know, a internationally wanted, accused terrorist criminal, you know, who was accused of recruiting people for 9-11, financing terror, all these things. He's so the opposite of what you imagine. He's so in love with American culture. He can quote sort of, you know, every line of the Big Lebowski he knows by heart because he watched it 110 times while he was in prison and he'd just come out with this stuff. And he's just incredibly good company, very funny. And also just amazingly humane. And uh, the idea we all talk about, you know, of people forgiving, which we think is a very Christian thing of forgiveness. Um, after somebody has really harmed you or sinned against you, he embodies that. And I remember saying to him, how can you forgive what was done to you, I can forgive the people who tortured you for years, um, mistreated you, falsely accused you. And he said, well, it's not, it's not easy. It's, uh, you know, every day I have to think about it and make a conscious decision. I don't want to be someone who's swallowed up by hatred and the desire for vengeance. I want to move on. And so he's a man who, 14 years and falsely imprisoned by the American government, he hasn't asked for compensation. He hasn't sued the American government because he just wants to get on with his life. And, and, and that aspect of it really affected me. I thought, here's a really wonderful human being. And I thought, I want to make a film about that wonderful human being. We also did have access to both Mohammedou's defense lawyers, namely Terry Duncan, Nancy Hollander. And on the prosecution side, we had access to Stuart Couch, which is the role that Benedict Cumberbatch plays. And they were all incredibly helpful, and as, as was Mohamedou. And, you know, it's a very complex story that takes place over a very long period of time. And so that was really the challenge. How do we tell this incredibly complex story, which has geopolitics, which has um, uh, legal terminology, which has kind of all these different countries involved? How do we, how do we tell that in a way that's, that's simple enough for an audience to grasp? And also, operates in a way that's good storytelling and kind of like a thriller. You know, I wanted this to be an exciting story that you're, you, you know, you want to find out what happened effectively. You know, you're on the edge of your seat wanting to know what, 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 what is going to happen next. And 
And so when I started to think about this film and thinking about who is, a, is, a, is, a, is an actor with a, with a North African origin who uh, is incredibly charming um, and likable and who has an enormous range to be able to capture all the emotions that this, that this role uh, requires, you know, there was only one answer. You know, it was obvious right from the beginning. The casting director and I... Um, sort of looked to each other and said, well, it's got to be Tahar. So, you know, I think, it's, I think it's, it's the role of a lifetime for him, and he shows such amazing range and such wit and, 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 and intelligence and sensitivity. I, I'm, you know, I, I'm, I'm bowled over by what he managed to do. You know, Jodie is, is an actress who's known for doing you know, through her career, a lot of really entertaining kind of films, very Hollywood kinds of films. I don't think she's done anything that's really political or anything that's a kind of uh, indie movie in this kind of way. And so I think it was very exciting for her to do something so so different than, than what she's done before. And I think obviously most of her career these days, she's being, being a director and being a producer. And it has to be something that really sort of appeals to her on some fundamental level, I think, for her to, her to, her to respond and to engage, engage with it. But I took her the script and she said, oh, I, re I really like this, um, but I need to be tougher. The character needs to be tougher. And she all she wanted to take out, her instinct was to take out all the sentiment, you know, take out all of the kind of the Hollywood side of it, in a way, I suppose. And make this character as 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 you know much just about her job as possible she's defined by her job that's sort of all she all she is and i think that was a brilliant brilliant instinct and and uh, you know we made some alterations because of that and you you can you can feel just from the very first frames that you see jody you know who this person is you know the history you don't need to be told any of that that backstory that background you know who that person is and it's the you know it's the genius of, of, of a great of a great actor who's been doing it their whole life yes I mean you could think it can be set in a very brutal world but actually what you're what you take away from it is the decency of, of human beings and the, uh, you know the the, the, the the capability of people to forgive and to change and to change their minds and if, if ever there was a time that we need to learn to sort of see the humanity in the other side of arguments, it's right now when everything is so partisan and divided. So Benedict, you know, had, had to, um, in a way, take the, you know, he's got, I think, the hardest role in this film because he has to play a man who I think a lot of the audience will think is deeply unsympathetic to begin with. But right from the beginning, you feel like, okay, this guy is, he's part of the group, he's part of the military machine, but there's something about him which is, is uh, more thoughtful, more uh, 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 kind of humorous, and he has a great sense of humor, the real, the real couch. And um, uh, you have to, he, he gives him a, a, a humanity, it's not a caricature, you know, he's a, he's a, he's, he's a fully formed character in the way that Benedict envisages him. The only point in making something that, that has a political point of view is if you're going to reach a wide audience and maybe make them think a little bit in a way that they haven't before, make them go and look something up on Wikipedia that they haven't before. And so you need to, you know, there needs to be a lot of sugar in with the medicine. And uh, I think I saw the opportunity in this film to make something that is uh, a thriller and which hopefully, you know, has that edge of the seat quality, but also a film which is about really wonderful characters uh, who you fall in love with, and particularly to Har. And I think one of the things that I'm so pleased with is in the film is that, you know, even an audience who go in with an antipathy towards, you know, Middle Eastern males accused of terrorism on the fringe of terrorism cannot help but fall in love with this character, with this man. And I think that that can be disconcerting for people, but also it kind of actually, you know, opens our eyes and says, well, you know, we're all, hum we're all human beings. And, uh, you know, I want, we want to see, I want people to be able to see a Guantanamo prisoner 
as a human being like you and I, with a family, with feelings, with a sense of humor, with, with the whole package. I think what's interesting is Mohammedu has written this self-help book called Pocket Full of Happiness and much as we want everybody to know what happened at Guantanamo and to understand how compromised the American government was from this point and how essentially um, this is the beginning of the trauma and it's directly related to where we find ourselves now politically but going back to Mohammedu and his Pocket Full of Happiness that's all about being able to find contentment wherever you find yourself and I think that that's a beautiful message and something we could all do a little bit more of in our lives. Um, he has an incredible ability to form human connections whether it's with a fellow inmate through the fence who they never, he never sees which is true or his guards or Nancy or Terry or actually finally when he's in court through a video link he manages to connect very, very profoundly with the judge and with the jury, um, given two minutes to speak. And I think that that human connection is what this film is all about. So Kevin, as a filmmaker, is just incredibly curious and open, and he researches to death everything, and he, not in a kind of He's just open. I mean, you go in a taxi with him and he's got the guy's life story by the time you get to your destination. You know, he just loves people and he loves um, finding ways to bring these three strands, three very different people, one very, very super right wing, um, military, um, lawyer, one, you know, activist, radical, child of the 60s, not child of the 60s, but grew up, you know, as an activist in the 60s. And then Mohammed is from Mauritania and it's like dumped in this place and finding a way to bring those three stories to the hearts of those three stories together. And that's what he's just so fabulous about. He's empathy and human connection, that's his thing, and research. So he's loved all the details that we've brought to this project. In terms of production design, we have, Mark Carlin has been doing a huge amount of research since the summer and he has been speaking to Nancy and Couch and Mohamedou about their environments. I mean, Mohamedou's actually been incredibly forthcoming about Guantanamo and how it felt in the processes he went through, which I don't think any of us expected him or would ask of him to do that, but he volunteered that. And I think it has made Michael's job pretty profound. Um, so that's that's the Guantanamo section and in terms of the others, you know, there's not many places where you could do Washington, Albuquerque, Germany, Afghanistan, Guantanamo, you know, and Cape Town happens to be the place that we've landed and that's just brilliant. In terms of costume, so our costume designer as well has been, and she's amazing, Alexandra Byrne. She has been, she had a huge amount of prep time, thankfully. She, the biggest challenge was the military uniforms. And she did a huge amount of research. She got things made, she got things shipped from America, and even down to like the lapels, the insignia, the badges. Couch, Stu Couch, who Benedict plays, has sent us all of his medals. So the items that Benedict wears in the film are his. Real deal. The real deal. And you know, so like yesterday he gave us some advice before the scene, which was, you know, I would never make, remember, I only ever hold things in my left hand. The right hand always has to be free to salute in case you pass somebody that you need to salute, which I think is fascinating. So they'd carry everything in their left hand at all times. Um, or, you know, absolutely never put your hands in your pockets. This is the way that you stand. This is the way you greet people. So that, I mean, this would be a lesser film without the input of the people. That's been fabulous.
first of all, Kevin, Kevin McDonald, the director with whom I've worked 12 years ago in the Eagle. And uh, we befriended over the years, we wanted to work together again. And uh, the, when I, yeah, and uh, it was uh, the perfect uh, opportunity. And then the script, the material was amazing. The part was uh, incredible. And, and uh, I found what I am seeing usually as an actor is to be challenged, but above all, uh, what drew me to this project when I uh, when I knew that it was a true story is Mohamedou himself. I wanted I, I felt like I needed to do him justice in a way. And of course, I asked him questions about his relationship with his lawyers, with his guards, about what happened before uh, he got uh, taken from Mauritania and after about him, his life. And uh, I felt like I needed just to listen to what he was saying and try to capture his spirit and, uh, and the way he would talk, the way he would uh, uh, move, um, his uh, sense of humor, uh, his light, his generosity. I mean, when I discovered this uh, uh, hard story, I, uh, I mean, I had a lot of questions and I wanted to know a lot of things, but this one specifically, how, how is he able to turn anger into forgiveness to be able to not hold a grudge against anybody? Uh, that was something that I, that, that was very hard for me to, to really understand, to catch me, because I don't know if, I, if I'd be able to do this. But still, before I had uh, the, the script in, in my hands, I started to, to think about what, what, what it is to be angry against someone. And uh, little by little, I was thinking, uh, you're the one who's suffering. I mean, they keep going. You've been hurt and they keep going and you still think about it and, and you, you get hurt. So I thought about it, but I never knew how to, to to, to, to do it. And Muhammadu said something. He said, uh, uh, when you forgive people, it's a treat to yourself. For, uh, because it's a story that needs to be told because, uh, uh, because he is exceptional, first of all. And his philosophy is a good, uh, uh, is a great philosophy to take and to live with. And uh, I mean, just uh, beyond, beyond Mohamedou, the film and everything, I mean, it's about human rights. Um, nobody should be tortured. We live in our countries because we know that there's a constitution and, and, uh, and the law to protect us. So when you're not even protected by your your uh, constitution, well, where do you want to go? I mean, whether you're guilty or not, you, you, no one should be tortured. When we started to shoot, I had to learn, I mean, my lines and all of it, but I had to learn how to, I mean, different languages. I, I don't speak classic Arabic. I don't speak Mauritanian. So I needed to, to learn how to, to, I mean, to, to speak in those languages and to make it sound real. And plus we had a little challenge, which was uh, a harder one, is to uh, gradually build his ability to become uh, 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 an English speaker, uh, to become fluent in English. It was not easy. And, uh, and physically, I needed to put myself in realistic conditions to, 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 to go as close as possible to what Mohammed has been through without hurting myself uh, to make it believable and uh, to believe in what I was doing so I could convey authentic feelings and emotions to my, uh, to my director, to, to the audience and out of respect to Mohammed. So, um, yeah, I wanted to go beyond my limits and, and, and on and on to touch a kind of truth. That the movie is 
is about human rights, that there's a universal me message in it, is that uh, no one should be tortured. Whether he's guilty or not, uh, we live in democracies to be protected. And there is a rule of law, a constitution that has to be respected. So uh, yeah, if uh, the audience could just start to question themselves, uh, it would be great. Neil works for one of the intelligence agencies or branches uh, within the U.S. government. Um, and so therefore is, is a bit of a gatekeeper when it comes to certain information that Benedict needs in order to run a fair trial in prosecuting Mohamedou. And um, yeah, Neil is kind of proves to be a little less than helpful uh, in that regard because of his own traumas and dealings based out of what he felt through 9-11 and everything that was causing him a lot of, you know, fear and, and unfortunate anger and hate that I think a lot of people were possessed with in that time. When something as tragic as that happens, trauma can really screw people up. I'm representative of a lot of the fear in Americans specifically in that time. And I think that that's a very important part of the story, obviously. You know, people don't just go and act ill, I don't believe. They're acting ill out of their fear, out of their anger. Um, and uh, that needed to be well represented, I think, in this film, and it is. And I think that Neil is our proxy for that. He, he gets to show that. But um, important to show the other side, that redemptive side at the end, because truth in this, you know, as it is threaded throughout the whole movie, particularly with, with Couch, with Stuart Couch, there's a really, uh, there's a, a battle going on. Like, how do you, this guy's supposed to be this 9-11 ringleader that, you know, was responsible or partly responsible for killing thousands of innocent people, but it's the law and everyone Everyone should have a fair or the fairest possible trial that we can give them. It doesn't matter what we think of them, our predisposed notions of them. That's, that's the importance of the purity of if we can follow the law that purely. And I think that Stuart really honored that, honors that. And uh, yeah, so Neil had to be a foil to that on some level. Um, and then ultimately, I think, does respect what it is that what Stuart is trying to do. When I read the script, it reminded me very much of the Mandela story of someone who was incarcerated uh, for <laughs> no reason and then finding love and forgiveness for their captor. And not just love and forgiveness, but actual grace, yeah. understanding that those people are just acting out of their fears. It's, it, it, I mean, this is all mental health. It's all th mental and emotional health. I, I, it's the most important thing we can be talking about right now. And movies like this and stories like Mandela's hopefully are inspiring people to understand that more and more. But, you know, we're slowly but surely getting there, I think. Well, I think he uh, clearly is a very talented man and has a tremendous passion to tell this story and tell it fairly and tell it right uh, on top of his you know visual uh, and aesthetic talents working with Kevin uh, McDonald is uh, a, a real treat I mean the guy is an artist visually aesthetically but also very much wants to tell a fair and true story uh, about these people and about this saga um, and I also appreciate that he Asks, he knows what he wants, and he asks for it clearly and kindly. And that's, th these are very important things uh, when working with directors who are the captain of the ship. They are ultimately the ones barking out the orders saying, you know, raise that sail and lift that anchor and all that jazz. It doesn't mean we don't need security forces or people that are, you know, actively trying to thwart the plans of people who wish to do ill to other people. All of those things are very important, but we must not dehumanize one another through these processes. We must not look at another person as if they are an animal, 
as if they are somehow not the product of the society that they came up in, which is exactly what they are. All of us are. And if we can see one another that way, then through this judicial process, we hopefully might be able to stop dehumanizing our prisoners or, or even cr making them prisoners to begin with, depending on uh, where along in that, in that process they are. I think that um, we all need to be practicing more forgiveness and, and practicing empathy. And the great thing about empathy is that it's, it's quite selfish too, because the more empathy you have, the less fear and anger you have and the more freedom you get to enjoy. So empathy is a beautiful thing. And I, 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 wanna, I want that to be in every film always. You know, we spoke a lot about the project as a whole, and, and Terry's character in the film is a, an amalgamation of two different people, uh, real-life characters. So although the, Terry Teresa Duncan is named after an actual Teresa Duncan, the way that she's portrayed in the film is based on another woman as well. And just for cinematic reasons, they had to condense those two people into one character. And So a lot of it was Kevin and I sort of discussing a bit about how Terry, um, it will be different in the movie than she was in real life. But that also, you know, kind of, I think there's a very special dynamic between Nancy and Muhammadu, and Terry sort of acts as a little bit of relief, I think, um, to lighten some of the, the heavy fuse situations because she is just kind of a light and a lovely person and a kind person, and, and that's what we wanted to infuse into the story. I think Jody and I, what I really have come to respect and love about working with her is that she is just a professional. <laughs> you know, she thinks about everything. She's sort of meticulous when it comes to filmmaking. And I think because she is a director as well, she looks at stories, and perhaps she was this way before she was a director, but. I noticed that her perspective on stories and her perspective on character and kind of the overall scope of a project is very unique and very rare. He just brings a certain sense of grounding to not only the story but also to the set. He's super collaborative. He's always asking questions. Um, one thing that I really respect about Kevin and I've loved about working with him is that he, he's really good at directing. He's really good at saying how he feels and saying, I don't know, that was too much, or that didn't feel right, or let's try it like this, or let's try it like that, let's do this. And um, I, have, I, just, I love working with directors who are vocal and who have a strong point of view, but who are also open to your point of view. And so it's been, I, f I just feel like it's been a beautiful opportunity for me to learn from some of the greatest that we have out there between Jody and Tahar and Kevin. I I feel like a student on this movie and um, and it's just exciting. It's really exciting to sort of be a part of it and also witness everything unfolding before me and take lots of notes. Well, I got to meet the real Mohamedou over Skype initially. Uh, and you know, I feel like before you even meet this man, if you have, if you read the book, if you watch the movie, if you um, read one article online, you feel the essence of his spirit so strong. And so before I even Skyped with him, I just knew how lovely he was. And I knew how um, special and how unique and um, radiant his spirit was because you feel that you feel that in the air that exists even around his name and the first time I skyped with him and his big smile came up and he said thank you for doing this movie and and it just it moved me so deeply because all I wanted to say to him was thank you for trusting <laughs> us to breathe life into this in a cinematic way um, his courage and his ability to forgive, his ability to love, his ability to truly be unconditional um, and remain patient and calm in 
what would drive, I think, probably 99% of humanity to a place that's uh, very different than the place that he's in emotionally and spiritually and psychologically. It takes a soul that's so strong and whatever, whatever his life brings him for the rest of his life, he's here to move mountains and he already is. The fact that he is able to be the man um, and show up as the man that he is today, he's changing the world. He is the man that I wish kids would study when they grow up in school. He is the man that I think people should research and read about and listen to because the wisdom that pours out of his smile, the wisdom that pours out of his words, it's a wisdom that's a lost art in today's world. It's a wisdom that, that says everything that every single ancient, religious, biblical, or institutional text has ever said, which is just be kind to one another love your neighbor, take care of one another, forgive, show up. Um, he kind of strips back all, the, all of the distraction and chaos of consumerism and materialism and plants you right back down into the true seed of your soul. I'm so moved by how Tahar is, is choosing to bring Muhammadu's character to life. He is I mean, it's it's like watching um, live theater with him. He's so real and he's so vulnerable and he's so honest. Take after take after take, and the amount of energy that he has to bring to every single moment, and the the levels that you know, as a human being, we go from being really emotional to being extremely elated or whatever the varying degrees are, and every single moment of that wave of emotion is um, portrayed through the way that he chooses to act.